Gen 2 added baby Pokemon, but what if that's all I could use? Today, I'm not going to allow any other Pokemon in battle. For this ROM hack playthrough, I will be allowing items though, and I've changed the starters to start with Pichu. This is the weakest baby Pokemon in Johto though. It's really cute, I really like the design, but its stats leave a little bit to be desired. It does have Thundershock, which isn't too bad, but it's the only attacking move it gets to level up, so that's a little bit stressful for later in the game. And since it got the spotlight last time in my solo run attempt in Gen 1, Silver now has Togepi as his starter. I will be catching all 8 babies throughout the run. I obviously can't use them all at the same time, but I will use as many as possible at all times. And first up is a Cleffa right away on Route 29. This is one of the 3 normal type babies in this generation. It does get changed to a pure fairy type like Togepi later, but it has actually pretty well rounded base stats. Good special defense as well, which is nice to see, but it is very slow. It does have a much more useful learn set though. It has Encore, Sing, Sweet Kiss, as well as a bunch of special options and rollout. Switch training will be necessary for early leveling. I am playing on set mode. That's just the way I prefer to play, just to give it a little extra spice and challenge. When making this hack, I changed all the enemy teams. There will be no evolved Pokemon, and I made sure that all the baby Pokemon will at least make an appearance on some teams somewhere. I also changed the gym leader teams to feature more Johto Pokemon, which is a big oversight, I think, in the original design. I will be skipping Sprout Tower. I'm just going to go straight to the gym and fight Faulkner here in Violet City. Pichu starting with Thundershock is very valuable here, but Mudslap hits hard. His Pidgey is unchanged, but I did switch Pidgeotto for Hoot Hoot. I thought about others like Gligar, but I wanted to choose birds specifically that learned Mudslap, which limited the choices a lot, and unfortunately Gligar doesn't get this move even though it's ground type. Cleffa can beat Faulkner after Pichu goes down, and that means I can get the Togepi egg in the Pokemon Center as well afterward to hatch for later. The next encounter is probably the most disappointing though. We see Tyrogue here in the wild on Route 32. But this baby has a terrible learn set. Well, basically no learn set. It starts with tackle and doesn't get any other level up moves. Its only stab move it can learn through TM is Rock Smash, no dynamic punch, nothing else. And unfortunately its base stats are really underwhelming. It's just 35 across the board, which is very strange for a fighting Pokemon. It does learn Rock Smash and Strength as field moves though, so it could be useful in that way. I catch a Bellsprout as an HM pal since no babies can learn cut. And we also get a Wooper cameo on the way to the cave. I love this little guy. I teach Mudslap to Cleffa for rock types since I don't have a lot of good coverage for them since Tyrogue doesn't have any fighting moves, and here in the cave I can pick up Swift as well. Cleffa can't learn it though, it's very slow, and that seems to be the reasoning that they gave to Pokemon whether they can learn Swift or not is how fast they were, at least in Generations 1 and 2. So I teach it to Tyrogue instead just so it has a second move for now, but then when we go into battle in the Slowpoke well, it immediately goes down to a Rattata. Not a good showing so far. But Cleffa is the MVP in the well battles and destroys the rockets. Those status moves and mudslap come in handy a lot here. Just wanted to pop in here and say make sure to like and subscribe. Thank you so much. And then I beat all of the trainers in the Azalea gym and then it's time for Bugsy. And here I changed his entire team. I didn't want to just use the Gen 1 Bugs Caterpie and Weedle. He needed a Johto team. So I replaced Weedle with Spinarak while Ladybug stood in for Caterpie. Ladybug's Sweet Scent and Supersonic actually combo better than expected too. I like the extra challenge, it actually feels a lot better than his regular team. I needed his ace to still learn Fury Cutter, which calls for Paris. And Cleffa saves the day here again. After the gym, Silver ambushes us and we have the rival battle here in Azalea. He still leads with Ghastly, but now his ace Togepi has Metronome, which can be a really risky and actually do some decent damage if he gets lucky. After which, to finish off the team, Zubat can be annoying, but Cleffa slowly whittles it down to take the win. That gives me access to the HM for Cut and Headbutt here in the forest. We head north and leave the forest to find the next baby encounter, Igglybuff. Unfortunately, Igglybuff feels like a weird gimmick Pokemon. It has incredible base HP, the same as Dugong, Ampharos, Machamp, it's kind of insane. Its learn set though is very similar to Cleffa, and so it just doesn't seem to be as good of an option. Plus the terrible defenses can negate the good HP stat, which leaves it kind of in a weird place. But now heading into the battle against the third gym leader Whitney, we will see both the normal babies here on her team. Cleffa was an easy substitute for Clefairy. It even keeps Metronome and Mimic. I keep it basically the same. Igglybuff then stands in for Miltank. This is because that while Miltank is a single stage Pokemon, its base stat total is just a little too high to be considered a baby Pokemon for this run, at least in my mind. I did set a base stat total cap of 435 for all of the teams that I would fight in this run. This may seem arbitrary, but it does limit some of the really strong single stage Pokemon like Lapras, even Heracross, or Scyther, which don't feel true to the vein of a baby Pokemon run. But Igglybuff can still have Defense Curl and Rollout, which can be very dangerous. Charm and Attract can also buy time to set up and get Rollout rolling. But today, for whatever reason, it really just loves setting up Defense Curl instead of attacking, letting Pichu just knock it out. 
I don't really know what the AI was doing there. Very strange. While in Goldenrod, our Togepi egg hatches. This iconic egg Pokemon is right in the middle of the bunch for stat totals. It is very defensive though, which is pretty nice. However, I won't be using it today. I already have a Kleffa as my normal type, and it has been a champ. Plus, the rival is using it today, and it had the spotlight in the previous hack, so go back and watch that if you want to see more Togepi. But uh, I think for today, it's going to take a back seat. Heading north from Goldenrod, we're going to fight both a Pichu and a Magby, and on Route 37, I ran into this trainer with a Drowsy. It knows Hypnosis and Dream Eater. This creepy Pokemon wipes out my entire team, and I have to white out here. That is my first official whiteout in this run. I do stop at the Goldenrod Mart to pick up a TM for Thunder Punch. This will be very useful in just a moment. On the way back, I stop and pick up the TM for Rollout as well, just for later. And then I knock out the Drowsy to get my revenge. Right after that, I can finally find a Magby. And this is the best of the baby Pokemon, at least in base stat total. It does have higher attack stats than defense stats, and it has great moves like Fire Punch, Flamethrower, it gets Thunder Punch, Fire Blast, Confuse Ray. It's a very good Pokemon overall. It almost doesn't even feel like a baby Pokemon at all. And this is a good example that the three elemental babies, Magby, Smoochum, and Elekid, are leagues better than the other ones. This is why I'm making them later encounters in this run. I didn't want to find them early and then just use them through the entire run and ignore the others, but they will be essential for the late game just to make this work. I immediately teach Magby Thunder Punch, both for coverage and so it has at least one hard hitting move for now, and then I can face a rival in Burn Tower. My first attempt though wasn't even close. Magby puts in some work to nearly beat Togepi, Cleffa is able to take him down, and Magnemite then just wipes me out. I go back and try again, and Magby gets cursed and paralyzed and nearly faints right away. Some of my babies are very underleveled at this point already. This is the added difficulty of this hack. Limited experience yields from unevolved Pokemon make this level curve even worse in Johto. Cleffa is still holding strong with a combination of Mud Slap and Sweet Kiss. It's likely going to be the only one of the first few babies that we found that stays on the team from here on out. After a few attempts, Cleffa is the one to deal the finishing blow to Togepi and finally take down Silver. And then I visit the legendary dogs for a moment, or, or legendary beasts? Or, or cats? What, what are they? From here, I don't think I'm ready for Morty yet, so I head west to train more. After beating all the trainers between Ekertik and Olivine, I can look for my next encounter as well. Smoochum is here on Route 39. I catch it and name it Cursed, because look at that thing. Despite the creepy design, it's going to be a very important member of our team. It has incredible special stats, a really bad defense which is a little scary, but it has an insanely good learn set for a baby Pokemon including Psychic and Blizzard. Plus it's the only Ice or Psychic type baby in this generation. While that combination has a lot of weaknesses, the good special attack and stab moves will be very important for many battles to come. It does get immediately wiped out in Morty's gym, but trust me, it's, it's good guys, don't, don't worry. And once I get to the Ekertik gym leader, I've changed his team significantly. Just making his team unevolved would just create a team of Ghastlies, which would be really boring. I did give him one Ghastly to start since that felt necessary, but then after that I added a lot of Johto team members that felt in the spirit of the gym. He now has a Murkrow with Pursuit and Nightmare, Mistrevis with Shadow Ball since he gives that TM, and a Houndor to round out the coverage and highlight the new Dark types. Overall this makes a much more balanced team, and it's difficult for the babies to handle. Especially Mistrevis, even with only a 435 base stat total, it's great with the moves it has. A strange interaction happens when I use Smoochum though, he immediately switches to Houndor. It does deal a lot of damage with Bite though, and causes another reset. I go and buy more items to make this battle possible. Magby now has both Fire and Thunder Punches, and is a beast. Other than that, I still have to rely on some cheesy tactics like Cleffa's Mud Slap and Sweet Kiss techniques. When Morty switches out, I can use Pichu or Igglybuff as sacrifices to get the switch to a better matchup, since I do prefer to play on set mode for the added difficulty, and uh, it does give some use for the weaker babies unfortunately. <laughs> Eventually, with the right setup though, I can knock out Mistrevis and claim the gym badge. I then teach Smoochum Shadow Ball for more coverage. Say that five times fast but I wish that Magby had this move instead. Ghost types were still physical in this generation, even though this move dropped special defense, weirdly enough. But with that, I am off to Olivine City. I can now pick up the next HM pal, Krabby. Krabby is an excellent pal, learning Rock Smash, Strength, as well as Surf and Whirlpool, but this makes Tyrogue completely obsolete. I deposit Igglybuff, and now my team is Magby, Smoochum, Cleffa, and Pichu, plus HM pals. I realized I forgot to pick up the Surf HM, so I backtrack to the Kimono Girls. For these battles, I almost just gave them all Eevees, but I thought that would be kind of boring, so I mixed it up a bit. So we have a Slowpoke, a Vulpix, Houndor, Merrill, and Mareep. After I beat them, I can get HM3, clear the lighthouse, and head to Cyanwood. But right before I start surfing south, I realize I also have unlocked Mahogany Town as well, which means I can go find an Elekid. This electric baby is going to be much more powerful than Pichu, and with better moves as well. It is also speedy like Pichu is, but just 
better. It even gets Thunder Punch, Light Screen, Thunderbolt, and Thunder all through level up. And now I can use its Thunder Punch to clear the swimmers on the way to face Chuck, which gets Elkid to level 22 by the time I make land in Cyanwood. Chuck's gym has two interesting battles to start. These first two trainers have illegal Tyrogues with moves from Hitmonlee and Hitmonchan. This makes them unbelievably better than my own Tyrogue. I'm jealous. After punching my way through the trainers, it's time for Chuck himself. He leads with his own Tyrogue. It doesn't pose that much of a threat though. His second Pokemon is Machop and it does have Dynamic Punch. Can you believe Tyrogue can't learn this? It's just sad. After dropping a couple of my team members, I can finally knock it out, which gets me the fifth badge. I do teach Dynamic Punch to Elekid for coverage, Plus, it's just plain funny to see with a baby Pokemon. I then make my way to the Lake of Rage. I knock out the Gyarados and teach Smoochum Confusion just in time for the Rocket plotline. Then we can pretend that the Rockets don't exist and jump immediately to Price's Gym. Gen 2 introduced a few unevolved ice types. No first stage ice Pokemon exist in Kanto. Jinx and Lapras are a single stage, but otherwise they start as pure water types like Seal or Shelter. But here, Price leads with a Swinub, which just melts to Magby's Fire Punch. Smoochum then comes out and is just the same story again. His ace is a deli bird, but that goes down as well. Magby is on a rampage, and it's showing why it's my favorite of the bunch. Not just for its strength, but also its design is so good. It's adorable, and it's just too bad it evolves into this butthead. After I finished this gym, I should have taught Icy Wind in the place of Smoochum's Powder Snow, but I didn't think about the difference of base power of those two moves at the time. I liked the freeze effect, and it just kind of stuck in my head that it was better. It probably would have been better to switch, but it doesn't last long anyway. I return to Olivine to give Jasmine the medicine and fight her right away at the gym. Her team is another that saw a few changes. She now leads with a Chinchou. This may seem strange, but there are no first stage Pokemon that have the Steel type besides Magnemite. Chinchou felt right as another electric type that could have possibly have ties to the ocean as well. Plus it's a Johto Pokemon that just doesn't get enough exposure. Of course, Magnemite comes out next and is basically unchanged, but then her Onyx comes out, obviously not yet evolved into Steelix. Its moveset is actually great though. Rock Throw, Sandstorm, Curse, and Iron Tail. And it actually gives me a reset. This is not a bad Onyx at all. On the next attempt, it takes out our Magby, misses an Iron Tail, and then goes down to Smoochum. I then fly back to Goldenrod and finish the rocket plot in the Radio Tower. I do finally realize that I should just give Smoochum Ice Punch, since it's actually perfectly designed to take on the rockets. Ice Punch for Zubats, Confusion for other poison types. It's pretty great. I end up whiting out to the executive at the top of the tower on my first attempt. His level 30 coughings turn out to be kind of an issue for my underleveled team. I managed to take him out in the next attempt, but the level curve is starting to worry me. I'm not getting nearly enough experience, even with fighting extra rockets and gym trainers, I might end up really underleveled for both the Elite Four and for Red. The rival ambushes me in the underground as I finish the rocket portion of the game. His team is very similar to how it would normally be. Zubat, Magnemite, Ghastly, Sneasel. Togbi now has Swift, but it's no longer an issue. I beat the executives and finish off the rockets for good. There is only one gym badge left, and then I need to prepare for the league. With my team members still below level 30 right now, or at least some of them, I really think I might hit a wall soon, even with items. There's no time to worry about that yet. I complete the ice path and make my way to Blackthorn City. I do pick up the Nevermelt Ice for the Smoochum along the way though. I heal up and head straight for the gym. And here I have good coverage for this gym. Smoochum hits hard with Ice Punch since it's the highest special attack on the team. Elekid has a stab Thunder Punch as well that can deal with the water types like Horsey. But now in the battle with Claire, she leads with a Dratini. How could she not though? It's her favorite, right? Well, at least Dragonair is. But Ice Punch makes quick work of it. She follows that up with a horsey, I switch to Elekid, and almost get taken out by Surf actually. But then I knock it out, and then her Ace Dratini comes out at level 40. I just set up Light Screen and sack Elekid. That gives me the free switch into Smoochum, who comes in to clean up shop. But then, Claire sends in the scariest beast in this entire hack, the Blessed Magikarp. This is the stand-in for Gyarados, and as such, I needed to make it good. I did some research and found all of the event moves given to Magikarp in Gens 1 and 2. Theoretically, if Magikarp got all three of these event distribution moves, I know, basically impossible, this would be its learn set. Dragon Rage, Flail, Bubble, Reversal. It's quite the set. Magikarp does outspeed, and it survives Smoochum's attack, so it can take it out with Dragon Rage. Cleffa then takes revenge though for its fallen comrade and knocks out this fearsome threat. I receive the Gym Badge in the Dragon's Den, as well as the Dratini for Waterfall. It's now time to pick up a few items and prepare for the hardest challenge yet, the Elite Four. I pick up TM40 Defense Curl to pair with Rollout if necessary. I also make sure to get all the rare candies before going to Kanto. I battle as many trainers along the way as possible. I know I am terribly underleveled at this point and it's really stressful. I already have my final learn sets and I face the rival in Victory Road. He starts out with Sneasel, but Dynamic Punch obliterates it with the four times damage. I swap to Magby to take on his Magnemite, getting paralyzed in the process. I heal up though and switch out to Elekid who faces a Zubat and Ghastly. 
Silver switches to Togepi for some reason. I go for a Dynamic Punch again and it goes down. Elekid polishes off Ghastly and then all that's left is Abra. This could be a threat with good moves, it actually has really good special, but it goes for a future sight, giving Elekid a chance to finish the battle with Thief. And that means it's time to become the champion with a team of babies. Right now it's a level 34 Elekid, a level 35 Smoochum, a level 33 Magby, and a level 27 Cleffa for the Elite Four. I do teach Defense Curl and Rollout to Cleffa just for additional coverage. I don't know if I'm going to use it in the battles though. And the first up is Will. Natu is not a problem for Elekid. Wait, it survives a Thunder Punch and knocks me out. Magby goes in to take revenge, but next up is Slowpoke. Luckily it doesn't have any water moves though, so I have a chance. Magby just barely doesn't have it though, and then I have to pivot to Smoochum. Shadow Ball takes out Slowpoke and does good damage to his Smoochum too. Natu is next up and confuses me, but Smoochum hits anyway and even follows up with a massive Ice Punch on Execute. And that gives me the win. Now for Koga. I lead with Magby because I know that he has a lot of bugs. Spinarak and Pineco are not really any threat, they just go down to a Fire Punch. I then set up Sunny Day for extra damage, but Sludge Bomb poisons me. I switch to Smoochum and then go down right away. Elekid is up next and almost does nothing with Thunder Punch. I have to send in Cleffa and revive Smoochum. I send in Magby just to get one more hit in, and then Smoochum can finish the Grimer. But it doesn't have the damage it needs for coughing, so I take a loss. Let's try that again. Magby leads again. I take out Spinarak, but set up Sunny Day on Pineco this time. After stalling a little bit, I can punch again and get to Grimer. With the Sun, I can do half of its HP as damage, but almost go down to Sludge again. Magby hangs on with one HP and gets to coughing. I heal and then get poisoned immediately. Elekid comes out and does pathetic damage before going down. Smoochum then takes over and beats coughing and Venonat into submission with its confusion. And that's a second member down. And now the hiker is back, it's Bruno. And here Tyrogue actually survives Smoochum's confusion, but that's not the big problem. Sudowoodo is actually really strong. This is the stand-in for Hitmonchan because it learns the punches, plus it has Rock Slide and Sandstorm. This fake tree menace takes out several team members before falling for Smoochum's attract. But the success doesn't last long because Onyx takes me down. On attempt 2, Smoochum is taken out by Sudowoodo. Without any good solution for this rock type, I'm really struggling here. On number 3, I change my team order and take down Tyrogue with Elekid. This means Bruno sends in Onyx next instead. I go for Dynamic Punch and it lands. I take the chance and switch to Smoochum. But Onyx outspeeds. I think that might be my biggest problem in this battle. After a couple more losses, I decide to use Rare Candies to get Smoochum to level 38. It now does more damage and outspeeds everything. I get back to Onyx and land Dynamic Punch again. I then heal Smoochum and let Onyx take out Elekid. Then Smoochum cleans up shop with a combination of Ice Punch and its new move, Psychic. That was rough, but now I'm really scared of Karen based on how that went. Now in her battle, she leads with Mischievous. Between its Shadow Ball and Murkrow's Faint Attack, I have a problem. She's now around 10 levels higher than me as well. I just take too much damage and go down, twice. I then realize I should lead with Cleffa. She can't hit Shadow Ball and I can put Mischievous to sleep. Then I can set up with Rollout and take it down. Then Karen switches to Oddish, which is easy pickings for Magby. Ghastly then knocks itself out with Curse, and I let Magby go down after hitting Murkrow with Thunder Punch. Elekid survives the hit and takes out Murkrow. Then Elekid outspeeds Houndour and actually hits Dynamic Punch again. It almost faints, but then Houndour hits itself in confusion and ends the battle. And now for the champion, it's time for Lance. He leads with a godlike Magikarp, which does tons of damage with Dragon Rage and takes out Cleffa. Elekid survives and punches it out. Lance then sends in Larvitar, the replacement for Aerodactyl here. It takes down Elekid with an Earthquake, but Smoochum avenges him. Charmander is next, and that's a bad matchup for me, so I send in Magby. It goes for Dig, so I switch again. I predict the Flamethrower and then hit with Thunder Punch. Since Charmander is only using Dig on Magby, I can heal between and set up with Smokescreen. Eventually he starts missing and I can take him down with Thunder Punch. I want the free switch to Smoochum though, so I stay in against Rotini until I get hit with Surf. Then Smoochum can take the victory and clean up all of Lance's Rotinis with Ice Punch. And with that win, the babies have made me the champion. But wait, there's more. We have to get to red after all. Let's head to Kanto to finish the game. The battle against Surge is long. While his Pichu and Mareep aren't too bad, his Elekid is actually a threat. But then at the last second with only my Smoochum left, he drops the ball and gives me the win. Sabrina is up next and has a very scary Wobbuffet. I can't use Attract, so I go for Ice Punch with Smoochum and then get hit by Mirror Coat. I have to wait out the Destiny Bond and take it out after it can't use that anymore. Execute though isn't a problem, but Abra actually hits really hard with Psychic. I heal up Smoochum and take it out with Shadow Ball. Gym number 3 in Kanto is Erika, but she just gets roasted by Magby, so no issue there at all. I train up a bit and teach Elekid Psychic before Janine. Elekid then just sweeps her team with that new move. 
Misty is next, and her Psyduck and Wooper are adorable until Wooper actually lands an earthquake. I then limp my way all the way through the battle without Elekid, but Smoochum just barely does it. That's now five badges down, three to go. Against Brock, I lead with Smoochum, and his ground and rock types are weak to Ice Punch. Plus, the fossils can't really stand up to special attacks like Psychic. I go find Blue on the remains of Cinnabar Island and take on Blaine, the Fire Master. He has a Cursing Slugma that doesn't do much, and a Magby that isn't as good as mine. His Ponita puts up a bit of a fight with Fire Blast, but Magby sees it through. With Blaine defeated, the only gym leader left is Blue, but now he's 15 levels higher than me. I'm terrified both for this battle and for Red coming up next. His lead Pidgey is no issue, Rhyhorn hits hard, but crumbles against an Ice Punch at least. Growlithe's extreme speed is an extreme problem though. It guaranteed outspeeds everything I have and does insane damage against these babies. After another loss, I go and buy a bunch of potions and X items to make this possible. With a combination of healing items and smokescreen, Magby can force its way through Growlithe eventually. Magby's Thunder Punch then takes out Magikarp and Slowpoke. A final flamethrower knocks out Execute and gets me through that battle. And now, with 16 badges, the only challenge left is Red. I make my way through Mount Silver and use up the rest of my rare candies, but my highest level is only 44, while Red's is 81. I have never faced a battle this underleveled in my life. And that's after 4 hours of real time. Because I am so underleveled, I know that I will need to test this battle and find what items and strategy even make it possible to win. I find that Elekid can reliably take down Pichu with enough healing items. Flight Screen really helps here to reduce Thunder's damage too. Charmander then poses an interesting problem. It has Flamethrower and Dig, which can effectively knock out anyone on my team, except for Magby if it uses 1x Defend. Then it can survive a single hit of Dig. I realize that I need to use a combination of Confuse Ray and Smoke Screen to mess it up and hit Thunder Punch enough to finally take it down. The Squirtle that comes out next could just knock anyone out with Surf unless I had Light Screen set up. With two members with Thunder Punch and enough screens or smoke screen luck, I could eventually find a way to get past it. But after that, he has an illegal unknown with Swift and Psychic. This was the replacement for Espeon, and I didn't want to just leave it with hidden power. And while tricky, even if I get past that unknown, he has a Teddy Ursa instead of a Snorlax. This does have the same moves as Snorlax though, with Body Slam, Rest, and Snore. And at level 75, it hits so hard with this stab move that I really struggled to find a way to get past it. I have to juggle team members, keep reviving fainted Pokemon, and just try to outspeed and set up with Smokescreen and Confuse Ray. Eventually, I can get it all the way down to minus 6 accuracy. This opens the door to inflicting status conditions and dealing damage. Rest and Snore make it a little more difficult though. The answer is a weird one for Teddy Ursa. Once its accuracy was lowered, I could paralyze and confuse it with this tiny little Pichu. Then I could set up Tail Whip, which meant it would deal more damage to itself in Confusion. However, the really weird part is that because it would use Snore when sleeping, it had a chance to hit itself in Confusion while asleep. That made it possible for a level 13 Pichu to take down a level 75 Teddy Ursa by helping it take itself out. After that, his Bulbasaur only used Solar Beam for some reason instead of setting up Sunny Day, letting Magby hit a Flamethrower, and knock it out. Maybe it doesn't want to give Magby the Sun? I don't know. But that knockout means that the underleveled baby Pokemon have beat Red and finish Pokemon Crystal. That was a final time of 4 hours, 57 minutes, and 1 second, and a game time of 14 hours and 52 minutes. Only 28 wideouts, but using items and a full team of babies. This ROM hack was a fascinating challenge and a good way to highlight all these new additions in Gen 2. But for more information about this version of the game, join the Discord in the description below. Make sure to like the video and subscribe if you made it this far. You are incredible. Thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful day.